Okay, uh, Ray has a uh, 1865 Spencer carbine on his bench here that is uh, needed of a little TLC and we've got it apart and I uh, thought we'd just make a quick video and show you some of the internal workings of the uh, Spencer. You know, it's just an obscure gun and a uh, really interesting history. One of the first repeaters to uh, really hit the scene and just want to show some of the, the workings of it. That's your ladder side in the back. It is a uh, tubular fed magazine. This is the magazine, the actual magazine itself, and this is the tube, the follower, that pushes the shells up into the gun. Of course, that's your whole magazine that comes out in one unit when you remove it from the rifle. Yeah, this one's got a few little problems, some dents and bends in the tube, and few other small things that we've got to figure out here I believe the um, ejector spring is not uh, functioning correctly so we're going to look at that and replace it probably broke the tip off of it would be my guess and that could probably be from a number of reasons I mean they are rather dated for one reason and then also probably excessive dry firing and excessive cocking and dry you know, dr you know basically just handling the gun dry and cocking it and dry firing it can wear out the springs. You can tell that it's been dry fired extensively. The soft receiver has been uh, pushed out here just with a hammer uh, wax on it on a repeated basis. It's not, mm. not going to keep the gun from functioning correctly, but it's cosmetically kind of ugly. Something to look for anyway. Yeah. And I imagine you probably see a lot of the same uh, types of things on the uh, Springfield trap doors and things like that that have been excessively dry fired. It is noticeable at times. Here's a shot of the bore. I mean, considering considering how old these rifles are, and the basically the varying amount of care that they've seen over the years. I mean, this rifle has got a shootable bore on it. This gun came in here with problems uh, cocking and it was more than likely just the fit between the trigger and the stock and the uh, lock mechanism because you can cock it and it fully engages, no problem, functional, there's not a thing wrong with this lock. It's a little bit of excessive dry firing which damaged the hammer but that stuff will clean up and won't be detrimental to the functionality of the gun. It springs, tumbler, everything's in pretty nice shape. You can see that the sear has some wear on it, but it doesn't push off, so it's good. Spencer's a rimfire, 5656 Spencer rimfire, and uh, this just basically has a uh, falling lever style uh, assembly. Just pull down on that, and then the whole unit pivots down and out of the way. This is your ejector, extractor actually, this extracts. And considering the age of that, that little wire spring still in functional condition. Nice uh, bit of case hardening still left on it too, for its age. Uh, and it's neat that it's got a coil spring in it to be so old, you know. Yes. Pretty cool. It's just neat to see the inner workings of these guns, you know. Not a lot of people get them apart, and when they do, they don't document it. So. I just thought we'd share a little bit of this for those of you that have never seen them before.